The cosmic causal body is also like a seed state. Is a seed state. It's a seed of the whole universe. Like a seed, like a as small as a mustard seed it is. And it's the it's the cotton. So the entire universe's condition is resolved there. And that's where you, you will end up at the world's end. You know, when the world's end takes place, what is world's end? It's nothing more than the whole universe relapsing into a seed state. Just as much as every night, when you go to, when you retire to sleep, you get into a seed state of ignorance and darkness. And so also, that in the in this condition, the cosmic causal body is like a seed state, the cosmic seed state. And the consciousness associated with that is Ishwar. So that cosmic, and this takes place at the time of the world's end. And of course, you know very well, every night we have a world's end. The whole world disappears into you. But thank God you don't disappear. Do you? If you also will disappear, you will not go to sleep and because you will not, you will not wake up. Therefore, but fortunately you are the same person who has woken up the next morning. Huh? You freely go to sleep with all confidence. Because you don't disappear there. Beyond us, you're only in a seed state. No more than that. Now, the next beautiful thing is when you get enlightened, right? All of this, the waking individual, you, the Vishwa, the waking individual, you relax into Tejasa, and this gets into Pragna, and all the three, at the time of enlightenment, disappear into the Divine. Disappear totally, totally disappear. Similarly, also now the gross cosmic intelligence is called as Vira, and then when this relaxes into the cosmic subtle state, is called as Niranyagar. And these two, when they resolve its form, gets in the cosmic causal body, Ishvara. Ishvara. God, Ishvara means the creator, God the creator. The understand is God the creator. So one is God the creator and you are the you are what? Creator. The creator individual. And then there is a creation. Isn't it? The world, the creation. So now what has happened is the gross body, which is the gross creation, which is the gross, along with the gross creation, it disappears into the subtle creation, and these two disappear into the causal creation, and all the three disappear into the divine. At the time of enlightenment. So all the three universes disappear. The world, not only does the world then take place, everything has disappeared. So also you as an individual also, you disappear. As an individual, you merge and get back to your divine state. So the only this is the only thing which is left. And this is called the fourth. This is signified by the fourth letter of the word O, of the syllable O. That silence, the fourth letter. So this is the science behind the O mantra. So, you disappear there, the universe disappears, and the cosmic intelligence also disappears. Even Ishvara disappears. God the Creator also disappears. Then what is this thing? That is God the Creator. What is this divine? Haven't you heard of the word, the God dead? Have you heard of it? The God dead? This is the God dead. In Christian terminology, it is called as the Father, the Godhead. So the creators, what is the creator's job? 
The Creator's job is to help you to get to the God. And then He too also disappears. His job is over. So, divine, the true self, you can call it the God head. The God head. So the four natures thus indicate and signify your existence, your present state of existence, your waking state is referred to by the word R. R merges into U, the second state, thus, and these two merge into the third state. And all the three merge into the fourth, which is your true state, your true beingness, your divine, your divinity in existence. So therefore, when you say the Om Mantra, the Om Mantra not only is the symbol for the divine, but it leads you at the end, in that silence, it leads you to your divine state. So therefore, in repeating the Om Mantra, of course, by the rep very repetition itself, you are invoking God. You are invoking God by the Om Mantra. But at the same time, having repeated the word Om, then when you end up and get into that silence, you have got in touch with the unseen divine. You are reposing in the unseen divine. So therefore, whenever you say oh, not only is the mantra significant, but where it ends, where the mantra ends, that too is even more significant, more important. So knowing these two factors, with understanding, you can now freely repeat this whole mantra. Now the next question is, since it is said to be a mantra, A question is asked by people, should you not be initiated? No, not at all. Not at all. It has already been given by God, revealed by God. And therefore, with all good faith, in good faith, with understanding, you can take that mantra on your own and keep on repeating it in your mind, in your heart with all feeling, with reverence, and with faith, and with understanding. Three things go together. Reverential, with faith, and then with understanding. You repeat it, and this word will now lead you to your divine nature or to God, or, or to God which is God. So, this is the science of the Om Mantra. And this mantra is very powerful. If you feel a little, if you feel a sense of fear, repeat this Om Mantra loudly and it will bring its strength into you. You will feel strong and the fear will go away. If you feel a little despondent, take this mantra and repeat it and say it and repeat it a few times. It will bring in strength into you. Get you back. Get you back to your normal state. So there is a power there in this, in the repetition of it. And then also this mantra.
when you keep on repeating it, all the negativities, the negative spirits which may be around, they will all disappear. Because they can't stand this vibration. The negative things can't come closer to this powerful vibration, this holy vibration, this holy sound. So they all flee away. So thus, this could be used by you whenever you feel the need for it as per the occasion. But mainly, it should be used with reverence, with faith and with understanding. And then, the negatives which are there within you, the negative factors, get cleared and cleansed from you. Get cleared. So whatever negativities which are there, which may be lurking there, the negative impulses, the negative thoughts, which may be within you, they all get cleared by the constant repetition of this month. So it's, it's got a great purifying effect on you. It purifies and ennobles you. So thus this is the mystic significance of this month. Oh, that's it.